students, a very warm welcome to Deeksha Vidantu English. I am your master teacher Neha Ma'am for physics subject. So today we are going to discuss the 10 standard physics chapter that is human eye. So human eye after studying about the light chapter, human eye chapter is also very important. In this chapter we will be studying about our eye, how it behaves, how the works, how it works and how images are formed inside our eye. So learning this concepts will be fascinating and will be exciting. This will also help you to score good marks in your examination. In today's session, I will not only be discussing about the chapter, I will be marking the important points which you have to write in your examination to score a good mark. Okay, so then let's start today's session. So the, are you guys ready to start with today's concept of human eye? So naturally, we know this chapter is human eye and colorful world, right? So there is a part there are two parts okay this chapter can be divided into two parts but in this session we are going to come we are going to complete the entire chapter okay so what are the major two parts let me first tell you that right so as the name suggests human eye and colorful world first we will be studying about human eye so what is human eye what are the parts of human eye how image is formed inside the eye yeah so i tell to my students every time that the 10 standard the two physics chapters which come initially that is light and human eye these are the two major important things which causes the vision to see all the things around us we want two important things what are they one is light if there is no presence of light we can't see the things and also our eyes which make them visible right so in this session we are going to study about the images how they are formed inside our eye so i think we are ready to start today's session let's start without delaying so you don't have much time for your examination also so let's be very specific let's be quick so moving forward so session objectives let me tell you what are the topics that are going to be covered in today's session okay so that it will be helpful for you to understand what we are studying okay by seeing this video what you'll get out of it right so today's video in this session we will be discussing about different parts of human eye so this eye is just what we see but inside the eye there are different parts which perform different functions okay every part of human eye has some function okay when they all perform their function and finally we'll get the image okay so don't worry much here it's very easy you need to draw a human eye you must label the parts and you must know what are their functions so i'll be guiding you with that so don't worry right moving forward how image is formed in the eye so when i said when all they function together okay the different parts have different functions when they properly work finally we'll get a image how that image is formed that is also will be covered in this session yeah moving forward power of accommodation power of accommodation nothing but it is the strength of our human eye to makes the thing visible that may be the thing may be at far distance or it may be near but we can see the things right so that is nothing but power of accommodation in terms of physics we'll be studying that moving forward there are defects of vision which you are going to study in your chapters right so you have already studied about human eye i hope in the schools and classes you will be completed already this right so what are the defects of vision why these defects are caused how to cure i mean how to correct these diseases the things these all things will be covered in today's session so coming about the defects of vision we have myopia hypermetrophia which is also called as far sightedness myopia which is also called as near sightedness moving forward presbyopia astigmatism cataract so these are how many one two three four five so five defects we are going to study 
okay as i said you i'll be marking important points in the session also right the two first two defects that is myopia and press but the hypermetrophia these two are very important concept in the defects of vision okay not only these concepts there are still concepts of refraction through the prism formation of rainbow twinkling of star sunset why sky is blue rest of the many concepts are also covered in this session but let's start with these concepts and move forward with the rest of the things okay yeah is that clear yes got my point so this we will be discussing first after this we have some of the other concepts that are left we are going to cover that also okay as i said in before only that entire your human eye chapter will be covered here okay no need to worry about anything it's not required you for you to go and check out other videos okay one video will be completely enough for you right so that is very important so what i want to tell students is you just have some days right 30 days maybe one month or less than that so you don't have the time to watch five hours of lectures and multiple videos right you must be very quick with your preparations so we have launched these series so that it, your preparations be very quick but effective also quick doesn't mean less information less knowledge no complete information complete knowledge with a very fast revision kind of thing yeah let's move forward so moving forward we got to know what are the session objectives so before moving ahead a quick shout out that is if you haven't subscribed the channel yet just go and subscribe the channel because this channel will help you for your complete preparation of your board examination and it is completely free we are not charging anything for any kind of lecture notes questions or anything else so subscribe the channel it will be helpful for you yeah you can watch this deeksha vidantu class 9th and 10th english channel right which you are watching right now so watch this videos completely if you like the video hit that like button and share this video with your friends so that we can all learn together and if you have any opinion any suggestion any kind of question you can put that freely in the comment section we'll be going through that right so again we have the telegram channel so the links will be provide, provided is the things clear so don't miss out this okay it's a very good channel so initially we were having the kannada channel many students requested for the english channel for the purpose of students for on the request of students we have started this for you so make the most use of it whatever you want you can tell that you can gain your knowledge you can gain your marks with us right so let's move forward starting with the first concept that is parts of human eye okay so first entering to how the image is formed in human eye we must know what are the parts that are present in our eye right so this is the beautiful diagram okay in the examination if they ask you to draw the diagram draw it very neatly and properly okay some may be very good at drawings but some may not but that's not worry you can use the compass and it's not very difficult diagram also right so some of the small things if you notice you can draw it easily okay so don't miss out this question if in the examination they ask you to draw the human eye and label the parts it's the most easiest question you don't need to remember any kind of sentence and all right just you have to draw the diagram and label the parts so don't miss out this question it may be asked for five marks also so important so what i am telling here you to learn the drawing of human eye and labeling the parts okay i hope that is clear right so before entering to the let explaining about the parts let us read what is given here the eyeball is approximately spherical in shape okay it's not a complete sphere it's approximately a sphere kind of structure right with a diameter of 2.3 cm 
in MCQ question, in one marker question, they may ask what is the diameter of human eye. So you have to remember that it is 2.3 centimeters. Clear? So and it is approximately spherical in shape. Yes? Okay. So moving forward, this is the diagram of human eye. Let's start by one by one. Okay? The definition, the function of this part, how you have to write it in your examination, that will be discussed in the next slides. Okay? Here I'm giving you an overview about what are these parts and what they do. Okay? Yeah, let's start with the outermost layer that is called as cornea, okay? The outermost layer of human eye is called as cornea, okay? So let me tell you, what is the function of this cornea? So as it is the outermost layer, you can see in your eyes, right? There will be a layer on your eyes, right? Yeah. So what is its function? Its function is to protect our human eye. Okay, our human eye is a very delicate, it's part of human being, right? So to protect our eyes, there is this layer called as cornea, which protects us from the foreign particles. It may be some dust, anything unwanted thing. If something is falling in our eye, so that upper layer will stop it. Okay, it will not allow it to enter into our eyes. Getting my point? So it's a protective layer kind of thing. And the most interesting point is, I'll be telling that in next because after understanding this concept, rest of the things, you'll get to know what is the special importance of cornea, okay? After that, moving inside the cornea, there is iris, okay? So what does this iris mean? So you can see here, it's a dark muscular structure, okay? It's called as dark muscular diaphragm right so what is its function this iris is like a muscle okay the cornea it's at the outermost layer which protects your human eye okay after that there is cornea sorry iris right so what is iris iris is a muscular structure it will be like this two muscles okay between these two muscles there will be a hole getting my point so the two muscles between them they have a hole so what's their function is uh, imagine so let me explain this with an example okay imagine you're looking at a very strong sunlight okay directly you're looking at the sun and the sunlight is very strong what happens to your eyes have you have noticed this yes so when we see a strong sunlight suddenly through our eyes, our eyes will minimize themselves. Okay, it will be like this. Why? Because our iris, they close themselves. Because they also want to protect our eyes from enormous sunlight. Okay, how much of sunlight, how much of light is required, that much enters means, enters on my eyes means it's not a problem. But if large amount of eye light is entering our eye, that may cause damage to other parts of our eyes. So what this iris does, it compresses itself. Okay, it contracts and this pupil, so the hole, yeah, here it is, see. The hole between this iris is called as pupil. Example, another scenario let's consider. You are searching something in a dark room and there is a bit light, okay? A small light, you are searching for something. What happens to our eyes is this irises expand themselves, okay? They expand this pupil also. It was small, it becomes large. Why? Because it wants to gain large amount of light. The light is very small. A bit of light is there in a dark room. So to make the visibility clear, our iris expand themselves, pupil will be larger and large amount of light will enter our eyes. Okay, so I hope you're understanding this, right? Okay, so we discussed about cornea, iris and pupil. Moving forward, we have crystalline lens. Okay, we have already studied about lens in the light chapter. Okay, so we know that what is lens, how lens work, yeah, we saw the ray diagrams also that if object is at infinity, if object is at 2f, etc, etc, how image will be formed. So you already know the meaning of lens, right? 
in your schools also you may have performed some practicals where you have used the lenses okay you have used the lens you have touched it i hope so it will be a rigid structure it's not like jelly it's not smooth it's a strong rigid structures the lenses which you have practiced but the lens which is inside our human eye is a flexible lens it's made up of made up of a jelly like of structure okay this crystalline lens is made up of jelly like structure and it is flexible it can adjust itself it can be thick or it can be thin it has that special ability in it so what happens this crystalline lens ensures that the image is formed on retina so what is this retina i'll tell you but understand what is this function of crystalline lens when the light enters okay by passing through the pupil when the light enters and it falls on this lens this lens ensures that the image is properly formed okay properly formed at the design so where it should be fall getting my point what is the function of lens it ensures that image is formed by the process of refraction we have studied this so refraction occurs through the lens right okay so i said it ensures that image is formed on retina now what is this retina okay what is this retina so you have seen the theaters you have watched the movies in the theaters right so there will be a screen on which the movie will be projected right so similarly the image the light what we have got from outside it should be projected on some screen so the screen is nothing but retina and the special point of retina is it's not like a normal screen it's a photosensitive screen now what is photosensitive so photo means light light sensitive screen whenever a light falls on retina it identifies that region okay it captures the information of that region so by this process like this what happens image will be formed okay yeah before that we have here a ciliary muscle okay i told you about the crystalline lens which is present in our eyes it's jelly it's made up of jelly like of structure and it has the flexibility to become thick or thin right so the lens will be hold like this by a ciliary muscle so if you consider this to be lens here both side there will be a muscle called as ciliary muscle so what's the function of ciliary muscle it holds the lens at its position okay at a proper position ciliary muscles holds the lens then what is its function this ciliary muscles helps to uh form the image on retina so we know that who forms the image properly on retina it's the lens and who will help this lens that is ciliary muscles how they will help see here if this is a rigid structure so you can you can't see here properly but imagine that what i'm telling okay so when i compress this if it's a jelly like it's a sponge like of structure if i compress this okay what happens this will be expanded right when we compress like this from the two ends i'm putting the force i'm compressing this what happens this will extend so this will extend and if i relax if i take this back like this if i pull what happens it will compress so the lens has the ability to become thick or thin and that will be controlled by this ciliary muscles when ciliary muscles contract lens becomes thick when ciliary muscles expand lens become thin okay you have to remember this point they are important there are still some points which ha we have to discuss about ciliary muscles that we will be discussing in the further slides coming to here this aqueous humor and vitreous humor are the kind of fluids okay this vitreous humor is filled throughout the human eye so what is its function why the vitreous humor is required if you ask the question this enables this helps the eye to be in this shape okay without 
vitreous humor our eye will not be a spherical shaped or a rigid structure it will shrink itself getting my point if the vitreous humor is not present it will shrink you can consider an example of air balloon okay when we blow the balloon air in the balloon it will get a shape it will be somewhat strong right if we remove that air what happens it will shrink out similarly this is okay so what's left optic nerve so now what is the function of optic nerve optic nerve captures the information so the image is formed on retina right so the image is formed on retina now we understood how the light rays came what are the things that happened and finally it reached retina and retina it forms image okay retina on the retina screen image will be formed fine so this image information will be carried out from retina from our eyes to our brain by optic nerve clear so got all the so i have discussed about all the parts of human eye i hope you understood that okay so clearly what you can do do you can make a, your notes right anyways you'll be studying textbook you'll be having notes of your schools i'm not talking about that prepare your own notes and it's not two time taking also once if you understand the chapter put the heading human eye and colorful world first draw the human eye label the parts and below that write its function okay mention their function what are they how they are made up of you can write these all things yeah see here so cornea as i said it's the outermost bulge part of human eye and the interesting part was 95% of the diffraction occurs at cornea yes 95% so when we uh, hear the word lens right we have seen here in human eye there was a lens we think that lens means it is producing the maximum refraction the refraction occurs at lens but no maximum 95% of the refraction is occurred at cornea clear so they may ask you in mcq questions that uh, where does the maximum refraction occurs they'll give you the option of cornea iris pupil eye lens so majority of the students will think that we know that from the live chapter lens means refraction so they'll mark that but that is wrong maximum refraction occurs at cornea yes moving forward iris i have said you that it's a dark muscular diaphragm between cornea and lens and it controls the amount of light entering to our human eye right so uh, what does iris do it expands or it contracts by that process what it is doing it is controlling the amount of light which enters enters our eye and what is pupil pupil is the small hole in iris so to remember the function of pupil and iris you can remember the examples that i that i have given you what are they when you directly see at a sun with extreme sunlight what happens your eyes shrink it will close in the dark room it will expand to get light so that is the thing but controlling the amount of light yes is that okay shall we move forward okay let's see what are the next concept eye lens it's a transparent jelly like of material so eye lens is made up of a transparent jelly like of material so it is flexible it can move right ciliary muscle this muscle hold the lens in its position what is the function of ciliary muscle holding the lens at its position yeah retina it's the black surface okay you can see it is a screen okay you can write it as photosensitive screen photosensitive fine okay rods and cones so this routine uh, sorry this retina has rods and cones 
So what are their function? Rods controls the amount of, it's not controls, it detects the amount of light and cones detects the color of light. These many colors, some will be high intense, some will be less intense lights, right? So to identify that, retina has rods and cones. What is the function of rods? It determines from where the brightness is or where the color is dark, like that, okay? It will detect amount of light. And what is the function of cones? It will detect which color, which frequency of light is coming. What is the wavelength of light? Based on that, it will identify the color. Okay? Yes? Yeah. Moving forward, the second concept is power of accommodation. So I said it is the strength of a human eye. Right? So see, power of accommodation, the ability of eye lens to adjust the focal length. Now, what is focal length? We have already discussed about this focal length in our light chapter. Right? So, what is focal length? It's the distance between pole and principal focus. So, you can consider it's the distance between our eye and retina or the image formation. Getting my point? So, what is focal length? So this is pole, you can consider this to be the outer surface of eye and focus. Focus is the region where image is formed, okay. The point where images are formed is called as focus and the distance between them is called as focal length, right. So we got to know what is focal length. The ability of eye lens to, so see here, to adjust the focal length. What's happening here? The focal length is not constant. It is being adjusted. To adjust the focal length is called as power of accommodation. So what is power of accommodation in terms of physics? It's the ability to adjust the focal length. Getting my point? It will be more clear when we read it out more. So see here. The eye lens is composed of fibrous jelly-like of material. We know that. Its curvature can be modified to some extent by ciliary muscles. The change in the curvature of eye lens thus changes the focal length. Okay. So see here. So I said you that this our eye lens it's flexible. It can become thin or it can become thick. Right. By the help of ciliary muscles. So I'll give you an analogy to remember this. Okay. See. When our ciliary muscles... Let's consider here ciliary muscle, here eye lens, and let's consider focal length. And object. So see here. Let me explain you one by one. Okay. Let me just highlight these points. Okay? Okay. Ciliary muscles. When ciliary muscles contract, contract, you are getting now? So it is compressing, it's applying force on this lens. So I'll write when ciliary muscles contract. What happens to the lens? When the ciliary muscles contract, what happens to the lens? It will become thick. So the eye lens becomes thick. Thick is nothing but yeah, it's becoming, its curvature is increasing. Okay, thick is nothing but the curvature of lens is increasing. When the eye lens becomes thick, the focal length reduces. Okay, what happen, What is happening with the focal length? It is reduced. When focal length is less, see, here, here is your pole and here is the focus and this is the focal length. It is less compared to Consider another focus being here with a high focal length. Okay. So, image is formed here. 
okay with a short distance what it means the object okay the person having less focal length or the eyes the objects having less focal length can see only nearby nearby objects to see the nearby objects we want less focal length getting my point so if you are seeing something near thing if you are watching something you are keeping it in your hand and you are seeing it what it means your focal length is less okay the object that is at near distance now now let me write what happens okay if we if the ciliary muscles expand we have seen for contraction if ciliary muscles expand or you can write as relax it is also called as when ciliary muscles are relaxed when they are relaxed this lens becomes thin so eye lens becomes thin and when eye lens is thin the focal length is more so how to remember this see here opposite thick means a large distance right thick opposite is small distance that is near focal length is less we can remember by this way so thick thin means short so focal length is more thick means it is fat focal length is less so opposite kind of thing you can remember when the focal length is more we can see far objects okay if the focal length is more we can see far objects if you consider any lens in your school or anywhere if you take it and if you check the focal length it will be a fixed value it will be having certain focal length but our eye has the ability to change its focal length it can be reduced our eye reduces the focal length when we want to see the near objects yes if you are watching something near object the focal length is reduced and if you are seeing something which is at very far our focal length increases so this ability of changing its focal length of adjusting focal length according to the object is called as power of accommodation so this is only we have studied about power of accommodation if you want to have a look at this screen you can see it once right yeah shall i raise the slide shall we move forward yes so now we got to know about the power of accommodation and variation of focal length with respect to eye lens with respect to ciliary muscles and if the focal length is less we will see the near objects clearly if the focal length is more we see the far objects done all right so moving forward so we understood about power of accommodation okay yeah so this is only that i have explained you i'll just highlight the points okay when the muscles are relaxed focal length increases this enables us to see far object nothing but distant objects clearly when now when the ciliary muscles contract the eye lens will become thicker right when it contracts eye lens becomes thicker focal length decreases it enables us to see the nearby objects this is what i have explained to you right now is this clear yeah shall we move forward so this is nothing but that the, the things what i have explained to you already okay shall we move forward yeah so coming to the next concept of far point and near point there is nothing they will not ask more about anything just you must be knowing what is far point and what's the value for normal human eye what is near point and what's its value so coming to far point it is the maximum distance right the maximum distance which human eye which are eyes can see the objects clearly so maximum at what point you can see the things distinctly clearly is called as far point and the far point for human eye is infinity you may now ask ma'am infinity 
How is that possible? Pramit, see, fine, I clean distant things clearly. Yes, you can see. You have an example. Don't you watch the stars in the night beautiful sky? You watch that. So what are the stars are near? No, the stars are very far. In many astronomical units, right? It is beyond our solar system. So they are extremely far. But you can see them, at least as a dot, but you can see them, right? So far point is considered as infinity. To remember the far point, you must remember the star. Okay, coming to the next point, near point. So what is near point? The shortest, the minimum distance, which you can see clearly. Why ma'am, we can see anything which is near, right? No, perform the experiment right now. Take anything in your hand, just move it towards your eyes. With a some distance, keep it at some distance and move it towards your eyes. Observe till what point it was clear. After a certain point, it will be blurred. Yeah, do you observe that? So that only till 25 centimeters, we can see the objects clearly. If the object is moved within 25 centimeters, you can't see them clearly. So our near point of human eye is 25 centimeters. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Got the point. Our point is the maximum distance where you can see clearly. That is infinity. Near point is the shortest distance, minimum distance where you can see clearly. That is 25 centimeter. If anything moves within 25 centimeter, you can't see them. Okay? I hope it's clear. So let's enter the important part of today's session that is defects of vision. So we'll be discussing five defects of vision as I said. But the first two defects are the most important. They may ask the diagrams also here. So there is no need to repeat again. So it's myopia, hypermetrophia, presbyopia, astigmatism and cataract. So let's start them one by one. Entering to the first defect of vision that is myopia or it is also called as nearsightedness. So what is this defect causes? Okay, what is the problem who are suffering with myopia face? See, a person with this eye defect can see only objects that are near, okay? They can see the nearby objects clearly, okay? See here, nearby objects clearly compared to distinct objects. So as the name suggests, nearsightedness, near things are visible clearly, but not the far objects. So how to remember, ma'am, this myopia, it's nearsightedness. Next, you will be studying about hypermetrophia, which is opposite to this. So I have a hint for that. Let me come to that afterwards. But first, let us understand the concept of nearsightedness or myopia. So what is the concept here is, yes. So what is the concept here is, you can see near object, okay. Understand the diagram or recall the diagram, the table which I have created. Okay, just now, right back, I have drawn that table, right? So, focal length, object and all. So, draw the table in your notebook. So, it will be helpful to answer all these questions. Without studying or mugging the things, if you remember a table, you can derive any defect from that. Okay, yeah. So, see here, near objects is clear. What it means? To see the near object, focal length should be dash. I have told you, near object, I have recalled that table, near object, beside that was focal length, less. So, here the person can see the near objects, nothing but the focal length of eye is less. Okay? He can see the near objects clearly, but he is unable to see the distinct object. He is unable to see the far objects. What it means? He is unable to increase the focal length. The person's eye have less focal length. So a normal human being, a normal eye if you consider, it will be having both the ability 
to reduce the focal length and increase the focal length. This person can reduce the focal length so he can see near objects but he is unable to increase the focal length. Unable to increase the focal length means what is the kind of lens? Is it thick or thin? Go to the again table. Focal length is more. Fo when focal length is more, lens will be thin. Focal length more means lens is thin. Focal length less means lens is thick. Getting my point? This should not be confused. So I drew the table first only. So here there should be no confusion. The person has a thick eye but the eye lens okay I'm talking about lens this lens is unable to become thin it's unable to become thin what it means go to the ciliary muscles so from one to one I'm linking from near object to we came to focal length from focal length we came to the lens now lens to I'm going to ciliary muscle okay so the eye lens is unable to become thin. So it's unable to become thin means the ciliary muscles are unable to expand. Getting the point? Ciliary muscles are unable to expand. Lens is unable to become thick. Focal length is unable to increase. So the person can't see the far objects. So let me draw with a diagram. Let me explain you that. So when the objects are far, we get parallel rays, right? So the parallel rays enters this eye. Due to the less focal length, they join each other, they cross each other before retina only. So the important point is, if image has to be formed, if you want to see anything, the image should be formed on retina. Okay. If the image is formed on retina, then only you can see them. If instead of retina, anywhere. So I have told in the light chapter, that is where two or more light rays combi combine. At that point, image will be formed, right? When they combine, when they join, image will be formed. But you can see the joining before retina. But this shouldn't be happened. We should correct this. To correct this, we have to increase the focal length. If we can increase the focal length, this point will move here exactly on the retina. When it moves on the retina, we can see the image. Yes? Done? Okay. So see here. So to increase the focal length, the rays are meeting initially, right? Before the retina, it's meeting. So we don't want it to meet very quickly. So we use diverging lens so that the light rays get diverged and meet at the right point on the retina. So we are using diverging lens. And what is the diverging lens? What's the diverging lens? Conve concave lens, right? So concave lens has been used here. So the light rays gets diverged by passing through the concave lens and after passing through convex lens of our eye, again it will be con converged or joined but exactly at retina. So now the image is formed at retina so the person can see the thing, object or anything. So the person suffering with myopia or nearsightedness defect will use concave lens to correct this defect. Getting my point? Yeah, let me raise the slide here. So you can see in this condition to correct it, we use concave lens. Fine. Okay. Shall we move forward? Let's see the next defect that is hypermetrophia or farsightedness. This is also similar to myopia but in opposite order. Recall myopia. What we studied just now that in myopia the person can see the near objects clearly but not far objects, right? This is same as that but opposite what I mean. 
in hypermetrophia you can see the far objects clearly but not near objects you can see the far objects clearly but not the near objects what i mean focal length is more the person who is having hypermetrophia has more focal length the focal length is unable to reduce okay the focal length is not reducing see here focal length is more focal length is more means lens is thick lens is thick i have told you how to remember this see your lens is thick sorry thin it should be sorry sorry focal length is more more means lens is thin let me correct this yeah now it's fine when the lens is less thin it is small then its focal length will be more when lens is fat it is thick it is more focal length will be less by this format you can remember that okay so the lens is thin but it's unable to become thick it's unable to become thick and what about ciliary muscles so lens is thin thin means it is expanded okay it is relaxed but unable to contract yeah unable to contract in this format the defect is formed okay let me tell you another point so we have studied here right here the lens is thin here the lens is thick right the lens is thick lens is thick is nothing but the radius of curvature of the eye is more or if they ask you in the questions in the examination if they ask you why myopia is formed one point you can write the focal length of an eye is less or you can write that the person has elongation of eyeball okay thick is nothing but eyeball is larger than the normal size so you can write due to elongation of eyeball this defect can be seen or you can write about ciliary muscles also the ciliary muscles okay thick means ciliary muscles are unable to expand right any of the statements you can write to show that why this defect is called caused okay similarly hypermetrophia here the lens is thin what thin means the radius of curvature you can see the focal length is more right you can write any of these statements here now how to correct this as the focal length is more the image is formed behind retina in myopia image was formed where it was formed image was formed before retina but in hypermetrophia the image is formed beyond retina we want to bring this image on retina so we want to converge it more so we use converging lens converging lens is nothing but convex lens so finally the exact image will be formed on retina clear yes got what i am telling so this is the whole scenario what's going on with this two defects so the main points what you have to remember for this two defects is one is what's their focal length what is the problem with focal length what's the problem with lens what's the problem with ciliary muscle where image is formed behind retina or before retina to correct the defect should you use convex lens or concave lens these are the important points which you have to remember right any questions any doubts if you have you can put it in the chat section you can put that in the comment section i'll go to go through the comments okay if you have any opinions you can share that we'll be checking we'll be looking for your feedback fine is that okay we are done with the two important defects so i'm asking you if you have still have some doubt anywhere you can put that okay so yeah this was about the two defects moving for forward the next defect is press biopia so what is this press biopia the two defects what we discussed before were the normal defects it can be seen in any person but this is a specifically age related condition 
this defect can be seen in the people who are in their old age okay so presbyopia is a kind of defect that is seen in old people so why this defect is created this defect is created due to weakening of ciliary muscles we know that as we grow older okay as people grow older what happens our muscles become weak right so muscles of the body also it starts become weakening similarly the muscle that is present in your eyes the ciliary muscles they get weakened when they get weakened the condition of presbyopia occurs okay so what kind of problem these people face we studied that in myopia people face the problems such as they can see the near objects but not far objects and in hypermetropia they can see the far objects clearly but not the near one objects but in this condition the presbyopia condition the persons the people will be unable to see sometimes far objects and sometimes near object so you can understand this when the ciliary muscles are weak okay the ciliary muscles are weak what they mean the muscle is unable to expand the muscle is unable to contract the functioning of muscle has been stopped okay when this functioning stop when they are not flexible they are not unable to move contract expand what happens focal length cannot be changed eye lens will be at the same position it will not become thick it will not become thin so focal length will not change when focal length will not change you can't see the things right so to correct this kind of defect we use bifocal lens bifocal lens what is this bifocal lens means see here you have seen i hope in your grandparents if you take the spectacles and if you watch them okay if you take and see it clearly this will be like this structure okay there will be some bump like this right see here so this is a combination of two lenses okay the lower region is used to see the near things if the person is unable to see the near things what defect is it is called hypermetropia right in hypermetropia what what kind of eye lens we use convex lens right so here convex lens will be used hypermetropia so focal length is more we want to make it less so we use convex lens and here the concave lens in the upper region concave lens will be used okay concave lens will be used so to, to see the far objects so you have been watched that when they are the old people when they are studying something when they are reading something they use the lower part of their eye lens they watch the lens by like this portion okay why there they have the convex lens which enables them to see the near objects when they are seeing some far objects they don't look from the lower end region they watch them far objects from the upper end of their lens why because this is the structure of their lens right now you can understand why people why they do like this okay so physics it enables you to understand what's going on beside you surrounding you right physics will help you to know what's happening right so that's very fascinating thing about studying physics okay shall we move forward going to the next defect that is astigmatism so what is this astigmatism these and all you can't expect the, the questions will not be there more on this defects okay first two defects are important again the diagrams will also be not asked but for information for worst case scenario if they ask you must be ready right so for that purpose i have included these all right yeah astigmatism is common vision problem caused by the error in the shape of cornea when the shape of cornea this cornea is not spherical in shape or this bulge is not proper you can see here the bulge part of human eye it's not proper here right at this condition you can see that astigmatism defect will be caused so when astigmatism defect causes what the problem they face is they'll face a problem to see the grid like structure 
What I mean by grid like structure? The vertical and horizontal lines together. Okay, you can see here. Okay, there are vertical lines and there are horizontal lines too. When the person sees this kind of structure, the image that is formed is distorted. If the person focuses on vertical lines, he can't see the horizontal lines clearly. If he focus on horizontal lines and see, he can't see the vertical lines. Why versa. So, to correct this defect. So, here the bulged part is not proper. Cornea is not proper in shape. To correct that shape, we use a cylindrical lens. By using cylindrical lens, the distorted image can be formed right. Okay? In astigmatism the defect, the cornea of the person, the shape of cornea will not be right. So, he will not be unable to see grid-like structure. To correct the defect, we use cylindrical lens. Clear? Is that clear? Yes? Or the eye lens have? If there is defect in the shape, we call that to be astigmatism. Yes? Shall we move forward? Yeah. Moving next is defects of vision. Okay? Yeah. In the defects of vision, that is cataract. So, cataract, it is also an old age, that is age-related disorder, okay? When people become old at that condition, you can see this kind of defect as, asting, not astigmatism, it is presbyophia and cataract, okay? The crystalline lens of people at old age become milky and cloudy. We have studied about our crystalline lens in the eye. I said that it's a transparent, right? When is T is transparent, we can see the images clearly. But with the age, what happens? This crystalline lens may become milky or cloudy. It may be filled with some uh, milkiness, something that as an obstacle. Okay? So, when they look at the things at this condition, what happens? They can't see the things properly. It will be like a blur kind of structure. They can't see the clear images of everything. They will be seeing somewhat blurish image. Or it may, the person may lose partial or complete vision. If it is in the initial condition somewhat milky, the person will see blurred images. But if it is completely filled, what happens? It may lose cause to the loss of vision. You can't see anything. And the only way to correct this defect is cataract surgery. With no kind of lens, by using any lens, we cannot compel, we cannot, what I can say, we cannot make them proper. Why? Because it's the defect of lens, eye lens. If you put any outer lenses also, the eye lens should be proper. So, cataract surgery has to be undergone for such kind of defect. Then only they can restore their vision. Okay? Got the things clear? So we have discussed about the eye, its parts, its function, then power of accommodation, far point, near point, defects of vision. What are the defects of vision? Myophia, hypometrophia, presbyophia, astigmatism, cataract, right? So, we are completed with the first part, that is human eye. In the second part, we'll be discussing about what? Colorful world. So, let's continue. Let's start now with the colorful world. I hope till here, everything is clear, right? If there is anything you want to tell, you can write it in the comment section. So done with this, shall we start, shall we move or yeah, if you want to just recall, if you want, let's pause for some minutes and continue. Yes. Shall we continue? Yeah? Yes. So this is a question. 
so this is homework question you can read it out you can answer that down okay write it write the answer in the comment section write the answer in comment section okay who will be writing the answer their name will be displayed in the next session okay your name will be displayed you will be given a honor okay so write your answer in the comment section let me read out the question for you once a 14 year old student is not able to see clearly clearly to the question written on the blackboard please that distance 5 meter from him name the type of name the defect of vision he is suffering from name the type of lens used to correct this defect state causes of this defect so you can write down the answer if you want to have a look at the screen once i'll just move away you can take a screenshot and comment the answer right uh, yeah let's move forward so the next concepts what we are left with the colorful word concepts that are refraction through prism so we'll be discussing about how refraction occurs through a prism we know already what is refraction and how it occurs through the lens but we'll be discussing about prism here right then we'll be discussing about dispersion of white light so white light when it falls it get dispersed how rainbow is formed about rainbow formation we'll be discussing atmospheric refraction the third concept refraction through atmosphere is called as atmospheric refraction but how that occurs what is twinkling of star advance sunrise delayed sunset okay before sunrise only we can see the sun after it goes down also okay when the sun sets but also we can see the sun so why this is we'll see what is the color of sky blue why this color of sun is red and what is scattering of light these all topics are will be covered now shall we start yes shall we start with the concepts let's enter let's start with the refraction through glass prism this diagram they will not ask you to draw the refraction through glass prism but you must be aware that what is happening inside it okay so see here so we know what is prism a uh, prism you have been seen in our schools also right so when we incident the light ray on this prism there is here two points at two points refraction occurs okay while entering the prism refraction occurs while going out of the prism refraction occurs we have seen this double refraction in a glass slab right so in glass slab we saw that how this refraction occurs right clear in light chapter and i have said you that this incident ray this is refracted ray and this is emergent ray and the incident ray and emergent ray are in same line right same path similarly here also one second similarly here also you can see a incident ray the process of refraction is going out here and the light ray is bending again it will be emerged so you must be just knowing that this as a just general analogy in uh, a prism refraction occurs twice there will be incident ray there will be refracted ray there will be emergent ray angle of incidence angle of refraction rest of the things that's all so let's not focus here more because it's not as important so what we have next is dispersion of light white light so in your examinations they will not ask you write the definition of dispersion write the definition of atmospheric refraction these kind of things they will not ask if they ask they'll ask application based things right but in that you have to write the definitions you are getting what i am telling definitions are important but not directly but indirectly okay yeah when the ray of white light is incident on a glass prism it splits into yeah it splits the incident white light into band of colors we know that we have seen the prism experiment these kind of beautiful pictures you have been seeing seeing right when the white light passes through the prism it gets split into seven colors they are not they are called as a spectrum they are called as band of colors anything but they are going to be split into seven colors 
Now you may ask how this white light is able to form seven colors, right? Because white and black light or white and black color are nothing such. White color is just the mixture of all colors and black color is presence of no color. If all the colors are present together, it forms white. If no colors are present, it forms black. As simple as that. Similarly, as white color has every color inside it, when it passes through the prism, it gets split. When it gets split, it forms seven band of colors. Right? So, different colors. Now, the question arises, okay, it splits into seven colors, but why it is like red is above and why this pattern? Why Vibhgaya series is maintained? You have studied about Vibhgaya to remember the colors of light in an order. Violet, indigo, yeah, Vibhgaya, you can state that. But why it is in that particular order? Why not sometimes violet goes up, one, sometimes red comes down? It's not like that. Why? Because different colors bend through different angles. The different colors have the tendency to bend with a different angle. The red light bends the least and the violet light always bends the most. Hence this pattern is formed. Right? With respect to the incident ray, as they pass through the prism, the tendency of the different light have the angle the, of refraction different. Okay? They are incident with the same angle, but different colors have the tendency of bending different. So we can see here red light, violet light. So the point you should remember is red light bends the least and violet light bends the most. This is what you have to remember. Yes, shall we move forward? Right. Before that, I want to tell you another point. In your textbook, you have been seen about this Newton's experiment of recombination of light. So, as dispersion process suggests, when white light is formed on a prism, it gets split into seven colors. Similarly, when you take another inverted prism and keep it here, okay, the seven colors are split. They fall on this inverted prism and after going out of this inverted prism, they again combine to form white light. First what happened, white light came, when it, pa when it was passed through a prism, it got split into seven colors. When these seven colors are passed through inverted prism, it again combined to form white light. So this is nothing but a recombination process given by Newton. Okay, you can call this as Newton's recombination of white light. Clear? Is that clear? Right? Yeah. So moving forward, dispersion of white light, under the concept only, we will get the application of rainbow formation. So you may get this question in your exam. They may ask, how rainbows are formed? Explain that. Right? If they ask about rainbow formation, remember the process of dispersion. As in dispersion, how the white light is split into seven colors. In rainbow formation also, white light from the sun is got split into seven colors which appear as a rainbow. Okay? So let me explain the process. See here, when there is moisture in the atmosphere, when there are water droplets in the atmosphere, okay, small, small water droplets, what happens? These water drops act as a prism. So we have seen how prism acts now. We have seen now, just now, that how dispersion occurs through prism. Similarly, these uh, droplet of rain, okay, these rain droplets, they act as a prism, okay. When this white light is fallen inside the raindrop, it gets all the process of reflection, refraction, dispersion. After that, it will emerge out. It will emerge out on the screen. We can, on the sky, we can see that as rainbow. Okay? You must have heard the saying that 
the rainbow occurs only when there is both sunlight and rain why it is physical physics in physics it is explained here why if there is no moisturizer if there is no atmospheric some water droplets or uh, rain droplets then we can't see the we can't see the rainbow so rainbows are not appearing always right and sometimes we can see because this process must occur there when this occurs we can see rainbow clear got the point yes shall we move forward yeah let me read out here first it is caused by the dispersion of sunlight by tiny water droplets present in the atmosphere a rainbow is always formed in opposite direction to the sun so remember this okay so rainbow is formed always in the opposite direction of sun why when sunlight comes here it moves through the water droplet then it will at another end it will form the rainbow okay clear yeah shall we proceed yeah next concept is atmospheric refraction we saw the refraction through prism dispersion through prism rainbow formation now it's the time to read about atmospheric refraction so tell me first what is refraction yeah what is refraction refraction is nothing but when white light enters the earth sorry not about earth refraction is nothing but when white light enters through a prism or a lens right what happens in the process of refraction so let me draw it here if i draw it will be more clear okay if we consider two mediums medium m1 and medium m2 when white light when any light okay net, let's not specify it to white light okay when a light falls on the medium one while it will be passing from one medium to another medium it will bend right the light ray will bend the process of bending of light when it travels from one medium to another medium is called as what it's called refraction so what is atmospheric refraction if this process the refraction process is occurring due to atmosphere in the atmosphere it is called as atmospheric refraction so see here, the refraction of light by earth's atmosphere is known as atmospheric refraction when the refraction of light occurs through or due to earth's atmosphere is known as atmospheric refraction bending of light ray when they pass through the layers of atmosphere when they are passing through the layers of atmosphere which have different optical density you have been studying about atmosphere right you know that the atmosphere has different layers as troposphere stratosphere mesosphere ionosphere etc and all so what is this spheres this layers this layers have different densities different densities nothing but different refractive index okay when the layers okay i'll check the diagram is there yeah so see here with the diagram it will be more clear so these are the layers you can see the shapes here right so then downer region will be having more density let me use another color this the near region has more density not less it has more density as i said okay as we go up the density reduces yes you can see the darker shade here near the earth as we go up the shade is light representing that density is more near the earth and it is less above the earth as we go far from the earth now if here there is a star okay there is a star here when let's let's take a star this star okay i'll explain with this star it's near to it's easy to explain right see here here there is a star and a light ray from this star enters star has entered our earth but the density there is different density so it gets bent between these two layers also density is different so it gets bent in another direction different direction 
so by bending 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 what happens finally it will reach the earth getting my point the process of refraction through atmosphere is called as atmospheric refraction now twinkling of star is an application to this okay in questions in exams they may ask okay so twinkling of stars is an application for atmospheric refraction so how that occurs the twinkling effect of star is due to the atmospheric refraction of star light i sure you know so when the star emits light it enters the atmosphere but due to different densities different refractive index it get bended so that's nothing but twinkle so how that twinkling effect is seen i'll explain that also the starlight undergoes continuous refraction and when it passes through the atmosphere before it reaches earth so i have seen here right we have seen here that before reaching the earth it undergoes multiple refractions okay so see here let's consider a person is seeing at from this point okay so at first he got the sun, uh, starlight so he can see the star but the second ray which is coming okay the second ray which is coming it gets diffracted okay refracted in different way so the light ray doesn't reach the eye the light ray does not reach the eye so it will be vanished again appears vanish appear vanish so this effect this continuous process causes the human eye what we observe is the twinkling of star appears and vanishes is nothing but the star is at its position but the light ray is getting deflected is getting refracted in different different directions so what happens our eyes will detect them as the twinkling effect so this is how twinkling of stars is seen right so you can see here twinkling of star the twinkling effect of star due to atmospheric refraction of starlight so why it occurs due to the atmospheric refraction of starlight the straight line undergoes continuous refraction as it passes through atmosphere so it goes multiple times refraction hence the process is seen so i, I have explained you how right okay moving forward atmospheric refraction advanced sun rays and delayed sunset the another example or another application for atmospheric refraction it is an advanced sun, sun sorry advanced sunrise and delayed sunset so what's this so when first of all when sunrise is considered in terms of physics or in terms of science so this is earth if you consider this to be earth okay there is a horizon okay this line is nothing but horizon when sun comes above the horizon we consider it to be yes this is the time or at this time the sun rise occurred when when it moves above the horizon now where is this the sun is below the horizon so according to science it is not yet rised but due to atmospheric refraction the starlight we have seen it gets multiple times refracted similarly the sunlight which is entering the earth also gets multiple refraction and what occurs so here a person is standing he is watching the sun like you consider okay our brain will trace back this light ray it will not go like this it will trace it straight away so to this person the sun appears here white not the sun appears here the actual sun is here right the actual sun is here but it will be appeared somewhere else it will be appearing somewhere else got the point so here actually the sun is not rise but to the person to the people watching it it is already rise so it's uh, estimated that it's about 2 minutes before the sunrise before 2 minutes of sunrise you can see the sun as it is rising getting the point understood about sunrise 
similar process during sunset. The sun has already gone, gone below the horizon. Okay, it has been gone below the horizon, horizon, but again due to atmospheric refraction, it is appeared as it's on the sky. Got the point? How this advanced sunrise and delayed sunset occurs. The time difference between actual sunset and the apparent sun, sunrise is 2 minutes. What I said you, right? It's 2 minutes. The sun disk is also due to the same phenomenon. When you watch at the sun, you can see a disk like of structure. Beside that, the light, is, light will be, uh, it will be scattered. Okay, so that disc like structure is nothing but it's because of the process of atmospheric refraction. Clear? Is this clear? Right? So, human night chapter moving forward about scattering of light. So, now what is scattering of light? So, simply, what is scattering? Scattering means the things, if they get scattered, they get dispersed here and there, we call it, it in simple English as scattered, scattering, right? So, similar way, when this light, okay, a straight, simple moving light, when it gets scattered in all the direction, we call that as scattering of light. When a light beam hits the particle existing in the medium, some light rays get absorbed while few gets scattered. When this light is moving in its own path, but here there is a hurdle, there is a particle. When it got right to this particle, it will scatter its path in all the direction, in all the possible direction. So it gets scattered like this. So this scattering process is nothing but, it is called as scattering of light and it is explained by Tyndall effect. So what is Tyndall effect? The Tyndall effect is the phenomenon in which particle in collide, particle in a collide scatter the beam of light in all the, in the direction of them, at them. So what's happening here? So you can consider an example first of all, before entering explaining Tyndall effect, I want to explain you a example. So there are two containers, two vessels you can watch. So both are filled with water, both are filled with water. But what we are doing, we are adding a drop of milk in the second container. Okay, we are now adding one drop of milk to the second container. So this milk that gets mixed with this water, so this kind of solution is called as colloidal solution. So what is colloidal solution? There are particles in the solution. There are some other particles in the solution. So that's called as colloidal solution. When a light, we'll take a torch and we'll on it, we pass a light beam. So this light beam passes through both of the vessels. It passes through both of the vessels. They are transparent. So what's problem, what's wrong in transparent? Right, they'll go. But when you look from out, you can see nothing in the first vessel, okay? It will be transparent water, how it was. You can't see the light there. But in the second container, you can see the direction of light, okay? You can see the direction of light which is going here. Understand the point clearly. Here is also light moving through this container, but it's not visible. But in second container, you can see the light. Why this is possible? Why this is happening? Because there are colloidal particles. We have add, we have put a milk drop there, right? So we have added a colloidal, collide in the particle. So when this light rays hit this particle, they get scattered in all direction and it causes the visibility of light rays. Okay, the Tyndall effect is the phenomenon in which particle in a collide scatter the beam of light that are directed them. This effect exhibit colloidal solution and some very fine suspension. So what this is explaining us, what this effect is telling us is 
when there are some particles some disturbance in the medium for light they light the light when it hits the it strikes with the particle and it disperses it scatters in all direction which causes the visibility of light this is what it's telling okay yeah so there are some of the examples some of the applications for scattering of light one is sky of why the color of sky is blue when we see up the sky we see the color of sky to be blue initially there was different interpretation but finally it was concluded that this process is because of scattering of light okay so this is also interesting concept let's understand this clearly okay see why the color of sky is blue particles and gases in earth atmosphere scatter light in every direction so this atmosphere is not complete vacant right there are particles there are moist moisturizer the what i can say there is moist and there will be some drops air drops rain drops everything filled with dust and all particles when our light hits at that particle atmosphere it's above the earth right when the sunlight is coming through the atmosphere the, there are particles present in this atmosphere so the light gets scattered okay light gets scattered but why specifically blue color i'll explain that also blue light is much more scattered than any other color because its propagation it propagates as smaller shorter waves this is the reason why sky appear blue most of the time so let me explain more let's consider this to be okay let's not use red let me use some other color yeah let's consider this to be a particle in the atmosphere okay this is a particle in the atmosphere the light got scattered okay so when a blue ray blue ray has a shorter wavelength uh it has a frequency when it strikes on this it will get scattered like this in all direction finally our what our sky appears blue if in this condition if you pass a red light here okay if you try to experiment and if you pass a red light which is having high wavelength so it will move undeflected why the particle is so small that it could not stop red light it has more frequency you can see that the particle couldn't stop the red light without touching the particle the red light wave passed on but blue light can't do that because it's small so blue light scatters red light does not scatter so the sky appears blue okay is it clear the red yellow orange these lines do not help do not scatter very much but you can ask that violet light it it also has the shortest wavelength then why not sky appears in violet in color because violet does not have that much of visibility or eyes are not sensitive to violet color but we can see we can point out blue color easily violets are more scattered than blue that they disappear getting my point is that clear shall we move forward yeah the next concept is sunrise and sunset why the sun color is red right why it's not blue why it's not green anything else only red orange sometimes yellowish around these three colors so why that is during sunrise and sunset the rays have to travel larger part of the atmosphere because they are very close to the horizon so they are very close to the horizon so it should travel longer distance most of the red light which is least scattered under our our eyes yeah so there is a sun sunlight is coming from the sun we are standing on earth and between them between us and the sunlight there is atmosphere when the sunlight is coming through atmosphere 
it is getting scattered by the particles present in atmosphere we have discussed that right due to particles present in the atmosphere the sunlight gets scattered and blue color scatters the most so it scatters everywhere and our sky appears blue but this red color yellow and orange they do not scatter so they travel straight away downward okay by this diagram only you can understand so rest of the colors are getting scattered in the sky but these three colors orange red and yellow they are not getting scattered so from the sun they straight away reaches so when we look at the sun we will see these three colors com combination finally our sun appears between the three colors red orange and yellow okay so this is how we see the red color of sun done got the things all yes so we are done with the concept if there is any doubt any kind of question you can ponder it down you can put it in the comment section okay so this was so we have completed all the concepts before ending the session i'll give a quick recap quick summary of this session what we have studied shall we have that yes okay so let's start with the summary so what we have discussed from the starting of this session so that we are going to summarize so we have discussed about parts of human eye that is about cornea iris pupil lens ciliary muscles retina these are the six important parts of human eye next we have studied about power of accommodation it's nothing but ability to adjust the focal length is called as power of accommodation far point is the maximum distance which you can see clearly that is about infinity near point is the shortest distance where you can see the things clearly that is 25 cm for a normal human eye yeah defects of vision there are different kinds of defects of vision such as myopia hypermetropia presbyopia astigmatism and cataract in myopia people can see the near objects clearly but not the far objects so the focal length is less to correct this kind of defect we use what kind of lens concave lens a diverging lens to increase the focal length hypermetropia or the far sightedness the people with this defect can see the far objects clearly but not near one so their focal length is more and we have to reduce the focal length to reduce the focal length to converge it further what we do we use convex lens so by using the convex lens we can correct hypermetropia defect presbyopia it's a kind of defect that is seen in the people who are in old age and astigmatism so what happens in presbyopia sometimes they are unable to see the far object sometimes near object because ciliary muscles are weakened to correct this defect we use bifocal lens astigmatism astigmatism is nothing but it's due to the uh, not proper shape or uh, you can say what you can say astigmatism is due to improper shape of cornea okay so at this kind of defect they are unable to see the grid like structures properly it will be like distorted image will be formed to correct this image we use cylindrical lenses and what's cataract cataract is the form of defect that is seen in old age people where the lens of eye lens becomes milky or cloudy so this may cause partial or complete loss of vision to retrieve the vision the cataract surgery has to be undergone right next we discussed about the dispersion of white light when white light passes through the prism it gets split into seven colors this process is called as dispersion why dispersion occurs because different colors have different tendency of bending angle so which is red bends the least and violet bends the most atmospheric refraction when light enters white light enters from sun to earth through atmosphere while it's coming it gets refracted multiple times it gets refracted due to different densities of our atmospheric layers so that process is called as atmospheric refraction what is scattering of light 
when a light is hit on a particle colloidal solution it gets scattered in all the direction that's called a scattering of light and it was explained by Tyndall effect by giving an example okay is that clear fine okay so we are done with today's session we have discussed about the scattering the every processes of human eye so the human eye and colorful world that is required for your 10th board examination is covered completely in this session okay in just one and a half hour 135 minutes we have completed the entire chapter with detailed explanation also so that will help you okay so why i'm telling it's not just i'm telling you it's the truth because now the time is less for your preparation so you can't waste your time in listening to the five hour six hour lectures and you don't have the time to watch multiple videos part one part two part three part four part five and so on so in one shot in one go with a less time a much clearer concept is being delivered to you right so yeah this was about today's video how was the video let me know it in the comment section you're watching Diksha Vedantu class 9th and 10th English channel so a quick recall once that if you haven't subscribed yet please go and subscribe it it will be helpful it will be graceful for you and you are watching the video till now so if you like it hit that like button and share this videos with your friends let them also get benefit of this and yeah write your comment write your opinion in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video let's meet again in the next session bye bye